Hi everyone, it's been 8 months since I first received the Pakiak Bluefin 142 and I've used it countless times and I thought why don't I just share my experiences with it. I'll share my expectations before I got the Pakiak and then what I actually experienced after paddling with it as someone who's relatively new in the paddling world. I've spoken about some of these points before in my comparison video between the Pakiak and the Tuktik but I feel some things have changed while adding new topics. So for this video, I will share my thoughts on weight, comfort and performance. So let's start with the weight of the Pakiak. Before I got the Pakiak, I didn't think the weight of the Pakiak would be an issue, but the more I use it, the more I realized I needed to plan better to find a spot to launch my Pakiak. At 28 kilograms, it isn't light and if you're kayaking by yourself, it does become a bit of a burden to carry it to shore without any help. It is understandable that the Pakiak is heavier due to the extra plastic needed as it's a modular kayak. So if you already have this expectation, then it's not a problem at all. So some of the solutions to help to manage the weight is to go kayaking with a friend who can help you carry the Pakiak together. If you're by yourself, find a spot where you can assemble your Pakiak close to the shore so you don't need to carry it for longer distances. Another solution is that if you aren't close to the launching site, get a kayak cart and roll it to your launch site. For me, the whole experience of having the Pakiak outweighs the weight of the kayak itself and is much more fun to kayak with friends so they can always help you carry it to the shore. Just make sure you bring some food to bribe them. Now let's talk about comfort. By comfort in this context, I mean the space in the cockpit and how it feels when sitting in it. I'm going to say it's almost too comfortable and by that I mean it's a very large cockpit. If I compare it to other sitting kayaks that I've used before, you can almost say the space is luxurious. The larger design of the cockpit is so that you can stack the pieces on top of each other when packing it away. If you like to move your legs around, the Pakiak has more than enough room for you to stretch your legs, unless you're taller than 6 foot, but I feel fine in it. I'm 6 foot 1 by the way. Due to the larger cockpit, you'll have less contact with the kayak, and if you're fine with that, it's not an issue. For those who like more contact with the kayak, the solution is to get some knee and thigh pads, which I also purchased from Pakiak themselves, and it made a whole lot of a difference. Adding braces and pads are a common practice anyway, so this is not unique for the Pakiak. For me, I like to have more contact to have more control of the kayak and feel the kayak while on the water. Back then, comfort was a priority for me as my legs would often go to sleep, but now I would definitely sacrifice some of the comfort for performance. So this leads to the next topic, which is the performance of the Pakiak. As a relatively new kayaker, I probably don't have much basis to say how the Pakiak compares to other kayaks, but for me, purely from a Pakiak experience, it has exceeded my expectations for sure. I bought the Pakiak to travel longer distances and to explore areas I could not with the Tuktek, and it sure has done that. You can see some of my trips in my playlist, so make sure you check them out when you finish this video. I do feel that the Pakiak has very good primary stability and you can definitely feel it on the water. I got used to it very quickly and was able to paddle through with these oh in relatively rough waters as well. With a pretty flat bottom, the secondary stability isn't that great and I capsized a few times while testing how far I could go while edging. Bit of a disclaimer, I'm not that great with edging anyway so I think it's more my issue than the Pakiak. One of the skills I really wanted to learn was kayak rolling, but I've been told that the Pakiak is difficult to roll because it is a high volume kayak and there isn't much contact to initiate proper leg drive. I soon learned what this meant and as mentioned earlier, I purchased the knee and thigh pads to help me get better contact and it sure helped, but it wasn't that easy. I'm still a beginner in rolling with the Pakiak, but if you intend to use it for rolling, I would probably suggest another kayak maybe the Track 2.0. If you want to use the Pakiak for touring and travel longer distances, then this is the kayak for you. Once you build up the momentum, it is easy to keep going and if you use a Greenland paddle, it's a very comfortable paddle. I also did a speed test with my Euroblade paddle and a Greenland paddle 
and I was able to reach an average speed of 8.5 km per hour with the low angle Euroblade while reaching a 7.5 km per hour with the Greenland paddle. So before giving my final thoughts, I just wanted to say that a lot of people have commented that the Pakayak is too expensive and it's not worth the price and they'd rather spend the money on other kayaks. Okay, sure, if you have the space, then you should do that. But for people who live in small spaces and want to enjoy a touring kayak, the Pakayak is a godsend. The average home size in Hong Kong is only 450 to 480 square feet and most of us don't have the space to store a full kayak. Having options such as the Tuk Tuk and the Pakayak is a blessing and gives us the opportunity to experience such a great activity where we could not have otherwise. So here are my final thoughts and conclusion. If you want a touring kayak but without the storage space, I'd say go for it. Just manage your expectations with the weight as this was my biggest issue. Even though my expectations weren't completely aligned with the actual performance, it doesn't change how much I love the Pakayak because it has given me the opportunity to experience a touring kayak. I was even able to learn to roll on the Pakayak, which was a bonus. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll answer any questions you have. So take care and see you next time.